ChatGPT was actually trained in quite a simple way. The researchers took a big language model that could generate natural sounding sentences that did not exactly match what humans wanted and then fine tuned it with human feedback. But of course, the details are a little bit more complicated. ChatGPT is based on the GPT-3 model, but has been further trained using human feedback to guide the learning process with the specific goal of mitigating the model's misalignment issues. And what are these misalignment issues? Well, language models like GPT-3 are really capable, but one of the problems is that they cannot really align super well with human expectations. Some of the problems you can run into when generating text with GPT-3 are lack of helpfulness, it might not follow the user's explicit instructions, or it might hallucinate, so that means the model might make up unexisting or wrong facts. You might also run into lack of interpretability, it is difficult for humans to understand how the model arrived at a particular decision or prediction. And finally, there could be the problem of generating biased or toxic output. And this happens due to the data that it was trained on. This language model may reproduce biased or toxic outputs, even if it was not explicitly instructed to do so. These problems occur because big language models are trained on tasks such as next token prediction or mask language modeling. Although these tasks allow a model to learn the statistical structure of language, they can lead to problems, essentially because the model is not capable of distinguishing between an important error and an unimportant error. For example, in the sentence, the Roman Empire mask with the reign of Augustus, it might predict began or ended as both words to score high likelihoods of occurrence, even though they have very different meanings. And overall, these models struggle with generalizing to tasks or contexts that require a deeper understanding of language. To overcome these problems, the developers of ChatGPT use a technique called reinforcement learning from human feedback. And ChatGPT is actually the first use case of this technique in a model that was put into production. The technique of reinforcement learning from human feedback consists of three steps. But just a quick note here before we get started. According to OpenAI, ChatGPT has been trained using the exact methods as this other model called InstructGPT, but only with slight differences in the data collection setup. That's why when preparing this content, we took the InstructGPT paper as a reference point. The first thing to do is collecting demonstration data in order to train a supervised policy model, referred here as the SFD model. For data collection, human labelers were asked to create the ideal output given a prompt. The prompts are sourced partly from the labelers themselves and partly from requests sent to OpenAI through their API, for example, for GPT-3. This process is slow and expensive. That's why the result is a relatively small, high-quality curated dataset that is to be used to fine-tune a pre-trained language model. Using this dataset, the developers of ChatGPT fine-tuned a pre-trained model from the GPT 3.5 series. Even though trained on high-quality data, the outputs of the SFD model at this stage probably also suffered from misalignment. To overcome this problem, instead of asking the human labelers to come up with a bigger data set, because that would be a very slow and time-consuming process, the developers of ChatGPT came up with the second step, which is making the reward model. The goal of this model is to learn a objective function directly from the data. How it works is for a list of prompts, the SFD model generates multiple outputs anywhere between four to nine. Labelers then rank the outputs from best to worst. The result is a new label dataset where the rankings are the labels. Since ranking the outputs is easier than coming out with the outputs from scratch, this is a much more scalable process. This new data is used to train a reward model or RM in which the model takes as input a few of the SFD model outputs and ranks them in order of preference. One important caveat to keep in mind is that this model strongly reflects the preferences of the labelers that worked in this project. And the third and final step is fine tuning the SFD model using proximal policy optimization or PPO. If you'd like to learn more about reinforcement learning, you can check out our video on reinforcement learning here. In this step, the PPO model is initialized from the SFD model and the value function is initialized from the reward model. The environment is a banded environment, which presents a random prompt and expects a response to the prompt. Given the prompt and the response, it produces a reward determined by the reward model and the episode ends. 
And finally, let's talk about how this model was evaluated. Because the model was mainly trained on human labelers' input, the core part of the evaluation is also based on human input. To avoid overfitting to the judgment of the human labelers that were involved in the training phase, the test set consists of prompts that were not included at all in the training set. And the model is evaluated on three high-level criteria. First is helpfulness, judging the model's ability to follow user instructions. Second is truthfulness, judging the model's tendency for hallucinations or coming out with facts. On this point, the model is evaluated using the truthful QA dataset. And lastly, harmlessness. The labelers evaluate whether the model's output is appropriate, denigrates a protected class, or contains derogatory content. For this point, the model is benchmarked on the real toxicity prompts and cross pairs datasets. So there is no denying that ChatGPT is a very impressive model. What do you think are the disadvantages as well as the advantages of ChatGPT. You can check out our comprehensive blog post to read more about the architecture of ChatGPT, the shortcomings of this methodology, and also to find some recommended readings for this topic. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.